So in this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can create mesh gradients, uh, what they are, how you use them, and as an example we'll be creating an image like this. Stick with us. So to get started I've just opened up a clean document. First thing I'm going to do is just open up our fill and stroke dialog box. So we come up to the top here, click on the fill and stroke dialog button, and we've got our fill and straight dialog box over on the right hand side. I'm also going to open up our layers and objects dialog box, so we click on the button for that one. So we can go back to the fill and stroke. Let's just press 5 to center that again. So the first thing is what are mesh gradients? If we come up and grab our rectangle tool, just drag out a simple rectangle. At the moment it's filled with a flat color. If we come over to our fill and stroke dialog box, we can see at the moment we're on flat color. If we go along the line, we've got linear gradient. So if we click on this one, we get a linear gradient, which is just a, a straight gradient transitioning from one end to the other. We can move along the line to radial gradients. Now this gives an elliptical gradient, so we can adjust the length of the arms. We can add colors, change the color of the stops. If we go along one more, we get to mesh gradients. So when we click on mesh gradients, it fills our rectangle with a mesh. So a mesh gradient is just a flexible uh, grid of colored nodes. And in between those nodes, Inkscape interpolates the color to create a gradient. So we get these smooth color transitions between the different nodes. And much like Bezier curves, we can adjust our grid. So if we come down and grab our mesh tool down the side here, we can come in and if we select a node, we can then adjust the segments that come off that node much the same way as we can paths. Now, unlike paths, we can't drag on, on the segment itself. It just doesn't, doesn't work. So working with um, segments is a little bit more clunky than working with paths. We have to stick to using our handles. But we can change how a gradient appears. So as you can see, it transitions from white to pink along this line. Depending on where we position these handles, we can adjust how that um, transition takes place. So we move it back. We can take the white back and we can just generally adjust our segments that way. When we use a gradient mesh to fill a shape, the outside of the gradient mesh is always fully transparent. So to fill our shape, we need to make sure that the gradient mesh actually reaches the edge of the shape. Otherwise, you'll get voids at the side. So here you can see that our rectangle now has this, this gap at the top here and down the side. So we can adjust these. We can move the, the nodes and things. We can move it inside the shape or we can move it to the outside of the shape. You can't see the color here because it's outside the shape, but the actual gradient is still there. The color gradient is still there. It's just hidden. So it's almost like it's been clipped. So just like gradients, we can actually come up and we can change the color of our nodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap to the color wheel just so we've got a better visual representation. We change this one to green. We we'll select a color there and you can see that we get this nice smooth gradient coming across our mesh. So that's the basic idea of meshes. So if we just quickly run along our control bar at the top here, we can have a look at what all the different options and things are that we've got. So first off, we've got a few different options that we can choose for how we use our meshes. The first one gives us a standard uh, rectangular mesh. The next one long is a conical mesh. We just go back to flat color so we can get rid of our, our mesh. And if we go back to our, our mesh tool, we can come over to our fill and straight dialog box, select mesh gradient. And now because we've got the conical mesh selected, it's filled it with a conical mesh. Now this just fills to the edge of our rectangle, so it doesn't go beyond. But one thing to realize with the conical mesh is it's not actually a conical mesh. It's actually a rectangular mesh that has been stretched round in an arc. So if we come over to this side, and move one of these handles, you can see that we can actually separate this side out, much the same way as we can separate separate out the nodes in the center. So if you're working with conical meshes, we'll just press Control Z to put those back again. If you're working with conical meshes, you want to select the nodes by dragging a box over the top, which will select all the nodes at that point. So now when I move it, it moves them as if they're a singular node. Same way as the center, we can drag a box over the node in the center and move that. So it's a nice way of setting you up with an already smooth circular gradient, but just be careful how you use it because you don't want to end up accidentally dragging your um, nodes apart. 
there is actually another way we can create a smooth circular um, gradient. If we come up and grab the ellipse tool, I'm just going to drag out an ellipse. We get our gradient tool. We go back to rectangular mesh. And I'm just going to double click on the shape to add a mesh. But as you can see, although it's a rectangular mesh that we've added, it's nicely shaped it to our ellipse. So this only works when you're filling an ellipse. So this is another quick and simple way that you can create um, a nice smooth elliptical gradient without the hassle of sitting there adjusting all the nodes to adjust your lines. We can, of, of course, sit there and adjust it. If we take it inside, then we get this, this gap above on our shape. If we take it up, any part of the mesh that goes outside of the shape is just clipped, so you don't actually see it. So they're the kind of basic three options. Um, if we move along our line, we can either um, use our mesh gradient to fill the fill color, or we can use it on the stroke color. Next section along is rows and columns. Now the rows and columns are purely for when you create a new mesh. You can't adjust the number of uh, rows now. If we try doing it, it does nothing. If we remove our mesh, so we click on our flat color to go back to a flat color. Now when we reapply a mesh, you can see that now we've got six rows. Now, now this may be useful in, in some circumstances, but in general use, I'd recommend starting with a, a one by one mesh and then adding to it as you need extra nodes or segments. So I'm going to go back to flat color to get rid of it and put a mesh back on it. So the next tools along are, allow us to change a segment to a straight line and a segment back to a curve. If you select uh, two nodes so that you've got the segment selected, you can change it to a straight line. When you change it to a straight line, it removes the handles. Now, unlike um, using our nodes tool on paths, we can't drag on the line to pull out the handle. So the only option you've got is to use the create a curve segment. But I don't know whether or not it's a glitch on my computer or whether it's Inkscape, but I can't turn it back. So once I've, I've turned something to a straight line, I'm a little bit done for if I want to turn it back to a curve. So use these with caution and only change things to straight lines if you're sure that that's what you want. To get it back, I can always press Control Z to undo and get it back that way. So once we've got our basic shape and we've got our nodes and segments how we want them, we've adjusted things to get, get it exactly how we want it, how do we then add extra lines? And extra nodes. So there's two simple ways you can do it. First up is you can drag a box over nodes and then you can add nodes in between and it will create a segment in between as well. So to do that you can hold down shift and press on I and that'll add in the extra nodes and the segment to divide the grid. The other way you can do it is to double click on one of the lines. So we can come over to the side here, we can double click on it and that works the same. So it, it adds it in. The, the benefit of using this method is that we can choose exactly where we want to put it. So if I pressed Control Z to get rid of that, we can come in and we can click it near the top and it put our segment at the top. So this is the method that I tend to use most often is just, just to double click on the line and insert my new segment and nodes. Another thing that you might have difficulty with. Sometimes the handles and things get in the way and prevent you from um, clicking on the line. So in that case, all you want to do is zoom right in and then you can click where you want without too much difficulty to add another segment. So what else have we got up here? So when we're coloring our nodes, there's a couple of main ways we can color it. We can either select a node and we can come over to our fill and stroke um, dialog box and add colors in much the same way. So if we selected this node, we could come up here, we could add a color to it, or we could come down to the bottom and pick a color swatch from the bottom and add a color that way. Or well, the other way we can do it is to take the color from whatever's below the mesh. So for example, if we wanted to take colors from a photo, we can import a photo, put a mesh on top, and then we can click on this button here, and that will take the color from directly below the node. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for creating our sky in a second. The next button along just allows us to scale the mesh to fit inside the boundary box. So if our mesh is smaller, let's zoom back in a bit. So let's drag some of these in. So we've got our mesh, but it doesn't actually fit the boundary box. So what we could do is just come up, click on this button, 
and it'll just scale it to fit, which can be useful in some circumstances. Next along, we've got a little warning just telling us that the mesh syntax might change. So next along, we've got smoothing. So we've got two different options. We've either got this Coons or we've got uh, Bicubic. Now Coons is a kind of linear version, so it, it, it's not as smooth on the gradients. So if you're trying to create smooth gradients, your best bet is using the Bicubic. So if we change that to Bicubic. So that covers all the things we've got at the top. Can't remember if I said, but when we create meshes and add in new segments and nodes, we can only add nodes, we can't take them away. So the only way we can take them away is to press Control Z to backstep and undo what we've done. So when you're, you're building your meshes, try not to add um, too many nodes and segments unless you actually need them. So best bet is to build it up and then add the segments as you require them. Uh, with that said, I think we've covered the basics. I think we should get on and create our sky. So to get started with our sky, the first thing I need to do is import the image that I'm going to use for my reference. So I'm going to come up to File, down to Import, and this is just an old photo of mine. So if we click on this, we can open it. We can press OK to the settings, and that opens up our image. So I'm just going to drag this off of our page. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out our statues. So to do that, I'm going to come up to Path, I'm going to come down to uh, Trace Bitmap and we obviously need to do some adjustment because this isn't quite working at the moment. So all I'm going to do is adjust the threshold. If we bring it down, so we just want to get rid of that colour. Then we can come down, press Apply and we've got a copy down here of our statues which looks pretty good. So I press Control Z to pop it back where it was. I'm going to come over to our Layers and Objects dialog box on my path unlock it so we don't accidentally move it and I'm going to hide it. The image, I'm going to lock that in place as well. So now we can't drag it off accidentally and put it somewhere else. So the next thing I want to do is just come in and create a rectangle um, to cover our sky. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. We turn snapping on. In here we go to our advanced mode. So we've got our full snapping options and I just want to snap to paths and cusp nodes. So we can just come up or enable that by clicking on our, our magnet. Then we just snap up here, drag it down, and we can snap down the bottom here. So we're completely covering our sky. So now on the fill and straight dialog box, I'm just going to come up here and change the fill to mesh gradient. Now this just creates our standard uh, one by one mesh gradient, which is exactly what we want. So we go to the gradients tool on the left hand side. So we've got a bit better control. And now I want to reduce the opacity because we can't see anything underneath. So what I'm going to do here is add in some lines or some segments to uh, follow the lines of the colours that we want. So when we're creating um, these different gradients across our image, if we have the lines close together, then the gradient between them is going to be very short and sharp. So if you've got a a quite a sharp edge. If we have our uh, mesh segments close together, it's going to change from one colour to the other quite fast, so it'll get a firmer line. If we've got a smooth, soft gradient that changes over time, then we want our uh, mesh segments further apart. So all I'm going to do is put in mesh segments so that they follow the colours. So at the moment our mesh gradient is has been created so it completely fills our rectangle. I want to use the tool for picking the colours from behind. So I'm just going to drag in these nodes very slightly. Actually, we'll just turn off snapping. I'm just going to move these, these corner nodes in very slightly. So they're just inside the coloured section of the sky. Now we do need to remember that our nodes are going to pick up the colours from di directly behind the nodes. So if this one was sitting on the black, then it would pick up the black. I don't want it to pick up the black because I'm creating sky. I want it to pick up the sky colour. So I've moved it onto the sky. So now we know when we add the colour from the background that it's going to pick up the sky colour on all four corners. We can now start adding in our segments to catch all the other colours. So to start with, I'm going to come over and I'm just going to start adding in segments and I'm going to adjust them so they follow. Should bring that one down, I think. So they, they follow the colours that I want to copy onto my, my gradient. So like I say, you might have problems when you've got handles in the way, so you might have to zoom in so you can so you can more easily 
um, position your nodes and then it's just a matter of going through and adjusting these adding adding more segments as you need them So I'm going to move these ones down because I've got a quite a sudden change from the blue sky to the, the lower level clouds. So I want to kind of capture that by putting our segments quite close together. I think I'm going to put one on going across these clouds so we get a bit of a distinction there as well. If we can't see which handle is which, if we click on the node, we can highlight the handle and then we can adjust them accordingly. So again, on this side, I can't really tell which handle is which. So if we come over, highlight the node, and then we can see the, which handle is, is the one I want. So I'm going to just put another one in here for a bit of blue. Again, we highlight the node so I can find the handle. We can bring it down. At this end, I'm going to move the node down and raise that up a little bit. So. So now I've got these segments going across, what we want to do is add a few in uh, vertically so we can get some of the transition of colours. I want to make sure that I don't get nodes ending up on top of um, the statues because of course they just come out black which will distort the colour of the sky. So if we go in between the statues, so we can put one up there, I think we go here as well, perhaps on this one, over here. And I think that'll do it. So we can go along if we want to make any adjustments where these these we want them to be better positioned for what we want. We can just go along and adjust them. So I think as f as far as we go, I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just zoom out, drag a box over all of the nodes, so they're all selected. Then we can come up to the top and we can click on our dropper to select the color or pick the color from behind the nodes. So now we've coloured our nodes, we need to make sure that they're fully opaque. So down here our opacity is down to zero. So if we drag that, we can take that right up to full opacity. And not much has happened. So if we come out, we're going to grab our selection tool. I'm just going to click off. I'm going to reselect our sky, so I'm going to drag a box over the top. And if we look now, the opacity has come up at zero again. So what I'm going to do is drag that up. And hopefully we get our sky, which we have done. So before we move on, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, when I first applied the color, if we go into our mesh tool, when I first applied the color by selecting all the nodes and coming up to my dropper tool and selecting the color from behind, it came up over on my fill and straight dialog box as if the alpha channel was fully opaque, the opacity was fully opaque, and it was completely transparent. So the other place you can go to look is if you come out, click on your selection tool, you can check the opacity of the actual object or path. Sometimes it's reduced there, or sometimes you may just need to go deselect it and go back in, reselect your mesh tool, and your correct opacities have become visible. So it's just a matter of coming out, going back in and just checking things. Sometimes the opacities aren't what they appear. The other thing I just wanted to quickly cover was if we, I'll go back to my selection tool, so we're just on the object itself. If you've got an object that's completely transparent and we click off, we can't reselect it. Oh, by the way, it's not selecting the photo because if we go to our objects, uh, our layers and objects dialog box, we've currently got the image locked, so it doesn't allow us to select it. So we want to select our transparent object. We can't click on it because we can't see it. So the two easy ways of doing it is drag a box over the top and as long as you've contained the whole of that object it will select it. And another very simple way is if you've got your layers and objects dialog box open we can see the rectangles in here. So all we've got to do is click on that rectangle to select it. So this is a nice place to select things if you rename things so you know what they are. So we could double click on this, change that to sky. If we've deselected, we want to select our sky, we can just come up, click on sky, and it selects our sky. 
Right, so moving on, let's go back to our fill and stroke dialog box. We increase the opacity right up. So now we want to adjust our mesh gradient so it fits to the outside of our rectangle. So all I'm going to do is come in, grab the mesh tool. I'm going to drag a box over all the end nodes so we select them all. Then I can come up, get hold of one of the nodes, and we can just move it off to the side so it's outside of our rectangle. We can do the same to the other side, so click off to deselect them, drag a box over these ones. Might need to zoom in a touch so I can actually see the nodes a little bit easier. Grab hold of one of the nodes, pull it off to the side, perhaps a touch further, and then we can just do the same at the top and bottom. So click off to deselect, drag a box over all the nodes to select them, and they just come up, drag them down, and lastly we can do the top nodes. So I'm just going to click off so I can just check my sky. Um, some of the transitions here are a little bit harsh, so we could come back into our mesh tool and we could adjust some of these to try and soften that edge a little bit. Might need to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Click off. So if we come out of our selection tool, oh, I think I'm happy with that. That'll do me. So we zoom back out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Now we've got our sky looking how we want it. We just need to we just need to make our statues visible and bring them to the top. So if we go into our layers and objects dialog box, we can come down, we can click on the path, we need to move that above our sky, and we need to make it visible. I'm also going to unlock it so we can work with it. My sky isn't quite lined up on this side at the moment, so if we come in, grab our sky, I'm just going to come up to the snapping, turn snapping back on, and then we should just be able to move this in until it snaps to the edge of our statue path. Now at the moment these are very harsh, we've got this nice soft sky behind but our statues look very harsh so what I'm going to do to those is just add a little bit of blur to them. So if we select them, come into our fill and stroke dialog box and I'm just going to add a little bit of blur just to soften them slightly. And finally we can just group them together so if we select our sky, hold down shift, select our statues we can come up and we can click on group and that group them together. And that's how you can use meshes to create these nice organic, natural-looking skies. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.